Bro, I am just having a time. <laughs> like, I tried to film this video once and it looked horrible, so we're trying again. G Willikers, hi, I'm Kendall. <laughs> If you're new around here, welcome. If you're not new around here, what is up, home skill biscuit? I've been M not super MIA. I would apologize for missing, but I don't, you know, life. What can you do? But I'm back, so what's up, what's good? Happy 400K. Thank you so much for everyone that subscribed and joined to just listen to me complain about movies every week, as well as, you know, just general fun times. Uh, what else? New wig. And it, for once, doesn't look like all my other <laughs> So if you're curious, there's a link down in the description box. It's not sponsored. Not sponsored. But more importantly, it's Saturday. Happy Saturday. If you're new around here, Saturday is when I do a little something called Bad Movies and a Beat. The series on my channel where I talk about bad movies and put my makeup on. I still have a little bit of the makeup still on my lashes from when I tried to do this earlier, so ignore that. I mean, you probably were going to, but now I brought your attention to it. Last time, I was about to say last week, whenever, <laughs> we looked at, uh, what did we look at? We looked at The Roommate, another one of those like uh, fatal attraction slash single white female type movies. I have, a, I have a love for them. It's a movie with very few surprises. Something about its predictability is oh so comforting. <laughs> if you haven't seen that video or any of the other videos in this here series, be sure to check it out up above or you can check it out in the Bad Movies in a Beat playlist. Y'all just can't let me be happy. <laughs> This week I'm doing a very highly requested movie that I just, I knew this would just make me mad. Here we are to hear me complain. Twitter, y'all don't love me. Y'all couldn't. Twitter fam just could not let me be happy. I've had so many people request this stupid ass movie. I don't know what made it popular. I don't know if it went viral, but whatever. Everybody at the same time was like, hey, can you watch Killer Sofa? So we're here with a good old hear me out. For those of you that don't know what a hear me out film is, I'll do the quick little rundown from a newbies, from a new peeps. Um, it's a cute little coining that we've made for films that just seem to be so ridiculous. Somebody in a group of drunk and or high people said, hey, hear me out. Killer tomatoes. Sushi with a vendetta, a homicidal turkey, a tire with a mind of its own. These are all real films, by the way. Uh, <laughs> and there's something, I have a, I have a love-hate relationship with Hear Me Out films. They are so frustrating to watch just because it's, it's what also, as I've said before in the series, there's something very charmingly self-aware about a Hear Me Out film. You know what you're making. You know, when you make a film about, in this case, a lazy boy chair coming to life, in theory, you should be aware of the type of film you're making. I say in theory because this film, I don't think got the memo. I groaned and reluctantly accepted this here movie and here's why. One, it's called Killer Sofa as opposed to Killer Couch, you know? Like I just, I'm not, I don't appreciate the lack of alliteration when it's like smacking you right dab in the face. Killer couch already taken, who knows? But regardless, unimpressed. My second issue is that of accuracy. That is not a couch. <laughs> that is not a sofa. That is a lazy boy. And third was the description. When a killer lazy boy chair falls in love with a girl. It's up to a disgraced Jewish rabbi and a couple of heartbroken detectives to figure out how to stop the bloody carnage that will follow. But alas, here we are watching a 2019 horror comedy. And to be honest, the movie is just as much trash as you would imagine, but I will say they caught me with execution. I really, <laughs> I expected it to go a lot different than it actually went. In some ways it was quite riveting, even though in most ways it was just boring as hell. The film begins with two indistinct white men in a foggy room. One is bound and gagged, and the other one has a saw that he uses to chop off the other dude's legs. What's really interesting is that despite someone getting dismembered, this this entire scene, I don't know if it's something about it being the first scene in the movie, but I forgot about it. The next few scenes really cement something that I didn't expect from this movie, and that is that it takes itself really seriously. <laughs> Again, I kind of touched on the idea that 
Hear Me Out films generally know that they're Hear Me Out films. There's very little confusion when you make a movie about a homicidal lazy boy, right? You knew you're making a stupid movie, but I've never seen a Hear Me Out film try to pass as a serious film as much as this film does. Like it does kind of make you wonder like, is that supposed to be comical in and of itself? Like it's a movie about an inanimate object that's in love with someone with a face on it. Innately, it is now a comedy, you know? Like, no, actually you need to have jokes. And the entire movie is so weirdly serious. <sighs> Why did I choose to do line work during a bad movie to compete? I couldn't have just done a smoky eye like I do literally every freaking week. That's gonna have to be good enough. And I don't care if it's ugly, y'all came for the story anyway. There's nothing really funny in the movie outside of the chair having a face on it, which I feel is the one I need to touch on because holy, if there's any joke of this movie, it is the face because God, it gets me every time. At no point in the film is that not funny. It's the only thing that keeps me watching it. <laughs> like regardless of where it shows up, it cracks me up. Any like non-chair related comedy, not funny. Take for instance, the two detectives that are investigating whose legs were cut off in the beginning of the film. Uh, they're named Detective Gravy and Detective Grape. Again, I don't know if that was supposed to be, I don't know if that was supposed to be funny. <laughs> Just like the absurdity, huh, they're named after food. But these two detectives, they come to have a conversation with our main character, a girl named Francesca, as well as her best friend, a girl that I refer to as Nose Ring. I don't remember what her real name is. One of the movie's big problems is that it's very bad at clarifying things until way later in the movie, as far as like just basic details, because the first half of the movie, I didn't know if they were coming to look into the guy who got his legs cut off, AKA the victim, or the guy that took his legs off. Presumably the murderer, right? It was very confusing, but they were looking in to talk about the guy who had his legs cut off. So why did they come to Francesca about this guy that got murdered? Well, apparently, now that I think about it, why do they know that? For some reason, they're aware that uh, the guy, the victim was obsessed with Francesca. So they go to Francesca to ask like, when was the last time you talked to him? Like, when's the last time you'd seen him? Yada, yada. Now, apparently, the connection between Francesca and the presumably deceased man is that he used to be one of her many men that were obsessed with her, in love with her. Rico was very dedicated to me. Dedicated. The guy was obsessed. Francesca makes a habit of attracting weirdos. And, um... <laughs> All right. Who am I to say that I, hey. She wouldn't be my type, <laughs> but you know. But yeah, apparently Francesca has an issue where like every man essentially that meets her becomes not only, you know, interested in her romantically, but like obsessed with her. The man that is now deceased is just one of the many. Even the detective, Detective Gravy, gives some indication that he'd be down to get some mouth breathing loving for <laughs> From, <laughs> that's so messed up, Kendall. That's awful, Kendall. Okay. <laughs> From Francesca. Francesca and Nose Ring um, leave this interview promptly after because they have furniture being delivered, a singular lazy boy to Francesca's apartment. And we get our first glimpse of the chair being evil because while it's being moved, one of the movers gets nearly all four of her digits chopped clean off in the most calm and respectable manner possible. Okay, okay, you two go take care of that. I'll finish this. And then, funny enough, left staring at the at the couch as if I'm on to you upholstery. Actually, that happens all through the movie where people stop and stare at the chair as if they know, as if they've had any indication. It's an inanimate object. You dropped it on her fingers, but they're already like, hmm, something's off about this here. The remaining guy goes to deliver the chair. It's not a couch to the nose ring girl, her grandfather, who is a rabbi. There's not a lot of reason why we need to know he's a rabbi, <laughs> but he's a rabbi. For whatever reason, feels super drawn to like touch it super ominously and is sent to the far plane or some shit. <laughs> where he's flashed into another dimension and he sees a woman running and screaming in a past life. Okay, so Francesca has a gay boyfriend. <laughs> 
The reason I'm laughing is because there is nothing that indicates he's actually gay at all. <laughs> like the only reason why he's apparently gay is he's the only man in the world apparently that isn't super enthralled with Francesca. So he must be gay. We don't see him screw a dude. We don't see him do anything particularly gay adjacent, but he just don't want Francesca. He must be sipping the gay juice. <laughs> I don't know. Ooh, I am allergic to something cause you are making me break out up here, hun. Even more confusing <laughs> than people's attraction to French. I'm sorry, I just don't get it. Sorry, that's it. It's whatever. I'm sorry. Okay, all right, it's whatever. The grandpa is concerned that the chair is a, and excuse me if I mispronounce this, a book, a book, a book. You sure it was a book? Yes. <laughs> At no point do they explain what that is. I like I had to look it up. And a big part of like my first watching, viewing of this film, I was just like, y'all really not gonna tell me what the hell that is? Okay. Apparently, according to Google, it is a figure of Jewish mythology in which a spirit possesses someone or something in order to complete some unfinished business. Everyone in this film is apparently from New Zealand, so maybe it's a more widely known concept in New Zealand. Um, usually in US movies, we just say like, the ghost had unfinished business, but we ain't give it like a whole like crew name. Is that, is that, is that offensive? <laughs> I'm sorry. The grandpa believes that the chair is possessed by one of these figures that have unfinished business, right? And he brings the idea to this random black woman. <laughs> At first, I didn't know who she was, but apparently it's his girlfriend. Grandpa down with the swirl. Uh, and she's also really into like the spiritual plane. I don't know if she's like a shaman. They still don't really explain her either. They don't really explain much. They just say black woman and she seems into the spooky ookie. I don't know, they don't tell us. Soon thereafter, Nose ring comes over uh, Francesca's house and we get our first of many chair grimming. <laughs> Every time. It gets me, it's at no point is it not funny, okay? That's the only thing consistent about this movie. This is the only thing funny about this movie. Then uh, we have easily the most uncomfortable scene of the whole film, which is this like really uncomfortably long scene of Francesca kind of like mind sexing the chair. <laughs> Again, it's another one of those situations where I was like, I could never be an actress. <laughs> I wish somebody would come to me and was like, okay, I'm gonna need you to have an inexplicable orgasm with this chair. Brendan, I don't, I don't know why the director must be named Brendan, but <laughs> just like, can't. But uh, kudos to her for committing to the craft, I guess. Anyway, after she gets more pleasure from an inanimate object than she does her gay boyfriend, <laughs> the chair has like somehow without opposable thumbs baked her cookies and lit candles. <laughs> the chair gets mad because the gay boyfriend <laughs> says, yeah, I totally baked those cookies. Yep, I'm thinking of you, babe. <laughs> now, throughout the movie, Francesca is being interviewed about the guy that got his leg chopped off and presumably killed. You know, during this time, she must reiterate like how irresistible she is to men. I've always had this effect on men. It's like they go crazy for me or something. You know what, girl, we love a confident queen. Let me stop. My dude is like 6 to 11 years old and she got him swallowing his own spit like he's 14. Now, Francesca's boyfriend, the gay, <laughs> sorry, it's just so stupid. We gets attacked while making a frozen dinner in the oven by the chair. What a sentence. Uh, instead of calling 911 for whatever reason, because he was in severe pain, like he messed his shins up pretty bad. He calls his girlfriend who brings, not the fire department or ambulance or anything she brings, the detectives. In, fact, in their expertise, we're able to turn off the oven. No one coughs, there are no flames. Again, there's like a lot of suspicious looks at the chair as if, that would be the first place I would look for who tried to set a house on fire. <laughs> like, okay. Now the boyfriend moves in with his mother who lives three doors down, which is a band. And he moves telling his girlfriend that he thinks that the chair is possessed. Soon thereafter, the chair, very aware of its own unfinished business, comes to collect 
that ass. He's he dead dead. And it's uh, very gross when the mom discovers him, but his very undeniably homosexual self was dead. Meanwhile, grandpa has gone to the Avatar state and while he's there, uh, he sees past spirits in history. He sees a woman running and she ends up uh, killing herself in front of another woman. For some reason, that particular vision gets them thinking that the recliner is dangerous. Like I'm sure maybe it would make more sense if I watched it again, don't want to. Don't wanna watch it again. But for some reason they're like, oh my God, yeah, that chair, whoever got that chair, they're in danger. Now it's around this time I start to notice how painstakingly slow this movie goes. <laughs> Um, I feel like this video might make it seem a lot more interesting than it actually is. It's not, it's actually really freaking boring <laughs> because again, this movie in many ways takes itself pretty seriously. So it's a lot of like built up suspense, but it always flatlines because you see the face. <laughs> it's a lot of, you see the face and it's just, <laughs> I can't even get a sentence out. You see the face, then you remember the entire concept and it's just like, I can't take you seriously. Stop wasting my time, Brendan. I don't know the name of the director, but his name must be Brendan. <laughs> There's so much good lighting and ominous music. And it's that, the, I mean, at the end of the day, we're here supposed to be afraid of a renegade piece of Art Van's fall collection. Francesca eventually sees the chair move for the first time and it freaks her out. And nose ring comes over and they like get out of the apartment for the night as the chair grims them across the balcony. <laughs> and then the next day she goes to see the detective about some more information regarding people that have wound up dead. Along the way, she sees another one of her obsessed suitors. Um, by the way, for a person that every man who sees her is obsessed, isn't it strange that she only had one guy <laughs> She only had one guy actually show up in the film. Uh, he's creepy. Uh, he breaks into her apartment and starts humping her hat and a bra. But as you can imagine, he does not survive long. He gets ironed out, no pun intended. <laughs> so many puns intended. So Francesca ends up staying at a hotel cause she's freaked out by the chair. And she's also like trying to avoid being hurt by any of these myriad of madmen that are completely and utterly obsessed with her. And during this time, despite being admittedly suspicious of the chair, she sends her best friend, so she say, uh, to back to the house to check in on the chair for some reason. Like you don't love your friend. Is this the type of friends y'all have? No. And her dumb ass actually goes. That's how you know y'all not actually friends. Cause she don't love you and you don't love yourself. Anyway, she goes there and while she's there, she sees the, <laughs> she sees the chair throwing <laughs> a man, the guy that was humping her bra or whatever, over the balcony. <laughs> She escapes by jumping down into a garbage can down below. We don't see her for a bit longer after that. Eventually, uh, Francesca gets freaked out that she doesn't see her friend that she apparently didn't love anyway because she sent her to her death. She goes back to her apartment. Whew. There, she hears the chair whispering the name Valerie. And eventually she ends up talking to the grandpa about whoever this Valerie chick is. Y'all really tried to make this a real movie and I don't know if it's commendable or more annoying. You know what I mean? Apparently, Valerie was a part of a duo. It was a guy and a girl. The girl was named Valerie. I forget what the dude's name was. And they were both like running around poisoning people, part of a cult or something, and like something with demons. I don't know. They were into that spooky shit. They ended up being prosecuted by a mob or something. Um, and before Valerie could be caught, she killed herself and her spirit went into a peasant woman who is Francesca's great grandmother. <laughs> generation after generation, now all these women have the same effect that Valerie had, which is men were obsessed with her. And now the guy that Valerie was in love with and was also doing the spooky stuff with, they both, both of their spirits wander the world trying to find each other. Now they're like, hey, Valerie's dead lover's spirit must be in the chair. Around this time, the movie finally stops taking itself so seriously. It was like, girl, know your place. You know what movie you made. Grandpa nearly dies and that was hilarious because nobody, <laughs> nobody helped my dude, he, he survived it. We finally figured out what the story was behind the guy that got his legs chopped off and apparently <laughs> he had gotten a guy to chop his legs off so that, so that he could fit <laughs> inside 
of the lazy boy chair. He is now inside. <laughs> He's now inside of the chair. And my question was, if this dude's spirit was looking for a body and he needs a body, he needs a human body. It needs to be a human vessel. That's what they specify in the movie. Why did he need to chop his legs off and get in a chair? Okay, I'm asking too many questions. That's my problem. I get too invested. That's my issue. My dude's going around walking like Seamus on purpose. Like, I don't understand why you had to lose your legs for this. Francesca and the rabbi decide to put the demon spirit into a box. At no point uh, before this did they feel the need to explain why that will work. Why would a spirit willingly go into the box? Whatever. But she takes the box and goes to the chair and is like, get the hell in the box. It's like, no. <laughs> No, oh, why would I? Quote unquote, comically sets the chair on fire. <laughs> the chair starts to walk near her. The detective gets there right on time and shoots it in the face, I guess. Is that what it, was that what we would call it? The face. And you can see inside the dude with the chopped off legs is indeed inside of the chair. And as much as we would wish that this is indeed the end of the movie, it's not. Because apparently Francesca gets possessed by the Valerie chick by a random like body. I don't know whose body this is. They don't explain it. Why would they, they don't really, very well explained anything in this movie. Why would they start now at the very end of the movie? Also, that doesn't make sense because whoa. <laughs> if Valerie's spirit has been in her great grandmother and was passed down to her, isn't she already in there? Why does she need to, <laughs> why does she need to get double, like she's, <laughs> you can't get possessed by something you're already possessed by. It doesn't make sense, but okay. Um, She gets possessed by Valerie and apparently we get a new rule at the end where if the body that the spirit was in dies, it can possess an inanimate object nearby, which, which is a new rule. There's still like the guy's spirit in the chair. So now Francesca, who is double possessed by Valerie, invites the inspector over, lets the spirit that's in the chair go into the detective. And now they're finally together, the old the old spirits or whatever are finally together. And then they leave off into the sunset and Nose Ring Girl comes to see what's going on because she saw that they killed the woman detective. She sees that the chair is still possessed, which doesn't make sense because didn't it go in the detective? Why am I doing this to myself? It's a, it's a movie about an obsessed chair. <laughs> Free yourself from this, Kendall. You don't have to be held by anger like that. <laughs> yeah, I don't recommend it. I don't recommend the movie. The movie's terrible. It's actually surprisingly boring despite subject matter. Just saying not to toot my own horn, but if you're gonna watch the movie, don't. Just watch this video. This was actually a lot more entertaining than the movie actually is. Yeah, I don't know how you could make a movie about something as ludicrous as a murderous chair make less sense than uh, it already did. They did it, they did the impossible. I'm actually kind of impressed. But if you like this video, be sure to like this video. Follow me on all my social media, Instagram and Twitter, both of which are KennyJD. And if you have any more recommendations for bad movies in a beat, be sure to put them down in the comment section and I will see you guys next time.